is what it sounds like And this is what it looks like This is what it feels like When the church is alive
Father. Thank you for your presence in this place this morning, Holy Spirit. We tune our hearts right now to your spirit, to your nearness, to your great love. Fear is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing.
last week. Oh, holidays for some, I guess, <laughs> for youth pastors. I went to our national conference, and for me, it was it was a, a significant moment. It was a life changing moment. Not only because there were some messages that were spoken that really shifted my mindset, but also because I just had amazing touch from God. A real refreshing. So much so that they didn't let me drive the van for a half an hour afterwards. Which is cool. But you know what? I went in there expecting it. I went in there hungry for it. I I went in to conference wanting God to move in my life. And had I not... I don't know if the result would have been the same. Had I not been expecting God to meet me, had I not been expecting God to move in my life, I don't know if the result would have been the same. And so today we're declaring Miracle Sunday. And my question for you is this, is what are you expecting? What are you, what are you coming to God with? What miracle are you asking God for? Or you just kind of come and go, well, if you sort of want to bless me or if you're not too busy, then that would be awesome. Come on, we change our decision? Why don't we decide this morning? Why don't we press into God? Why don't we sit on the edge of our seats? Why don't we come expecting? Why don't we lift our faith? Why don't we lift our expectation? And if you don't know what miracle you want, come on, why don't you ask God what miracle you need this morning? Come on, we're going we're gonna to expect. We're going to believe. We're going to have faith. We're going to push in. And we're going to believe that today would be the day of salvation. Today would be the day of breakthrough. Today would be a fresh start. Today would be something new. Come on, let's sing. towards us God we thank you that you are all powerful God that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world we thank you that you say in your word God that you can do God exceedingly exceedingly abundantly God more than we can ask or dream or even imagine God we thank you for you for our miracle that is coming God that is already here God that is in the process God we thank you God for your goodness Everybody said? Everybody said? Amen. Awesome. Hey, as you grab a seat, one, you turn around and say hi to someone. Welcome to the church this morning. Hey, well, so good to have you here at church. Uh, my name is Adrian. I'm the youth pastor here along with my wife, Abby. Uh, and we just want to say a very special welcome to you here at Elam. Uh, Pastor Mike and Amy are away today. They are in Tauranga uh, uh, helping celebrate the opening of their new building, which is cool and so exciting for them. And, uh, you know, part of, a, uh, part of a church they've invested so much of their life into, so it's cool for them to be there at the celebration. And we're going to celebrate too with some chocolate. Uh, so I'm going to invite my wife Abby to come up and bring some chocolate up. So if you've got a birthday or a wedding anniversary one, you come up and celebrate with us. 
And while we do that, we've got some wonderful kids programs. Uh, we've got kids programs all the way from one and walking uh, to intermediate age. So if you've got a young person and you'd like to uh, see them, uh, uh, we'll take them to, along to one of those programs. Go see the team at the back and they'll help you find your way. Nobody's celebrating this morning. Nobody's had a birthday. I'm having a birthday like on Wednesday, I think. I don't even know. Come on, uh, what are you celebrating with us? Wow, New Zealand opened for swimming and broke the record for 200 meter women's breaststroke. That's awesome. That's amazing. 23 anniversary, awesome. 78th birthday. Happy birthday. Awesome. So good. Hey, if you are here visiting us or joining us for the first time, we want to celebrate with you as well. We've got some team that would love to give you a pack of information and a chocolate. So what, right where you are, just pop up your hand and the team will see you and find you and bring you that information. That would be cool. And as well with, as give you some information, we'd also love to host you in our guest lounge, which is just out the foyer doors to your right. Uh, and you can just head in there after the service and we'd love to host you and get you a coffee and something to nibble on and meet you, see how we can help connect you into the life of the church. That would be awesome. Uh, so good to have you here this morning. I've got a few verbal notices. Uh, number one is that the women have a cool night coming up in the city, in Auckland City at our city campus. It's called Chef in the City. And they've got a, a chef all the way from Sydney, Australia. And she's written a book and she's made some food and stuff like that, which is cool because that's what chefs do. And it's going to be a great night. So grab a bunch of ladies, get in the car. It starts at 7 p.m. And the date is there on the screen, which is the 26th of October. And it's $15 um, for that. And you can register on Eventbrite. Uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, life groups are happening every week, and uh, they're really the heartbeat of our church. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're not a church with life groups, we're a church of life groups. We're, we're a church that, that has a bunch of life groups, and the life groups is what make up our church. And so if you're not connected in a life group, we'd love to help you get connected in that. So see the life groups area in the foyer, go see the information booth and give you details, and someone will get in contact with you, probably Pete, because he's the man, and he runs life groups, and he'll help you find a life group. It's going to be great for you. Uh, Remember to stay in the loop um, with what's happening uh, here at Elam, and you can do that um, via our social media channels and also through email, which is cool. Hey, uh, in, in the book of um, Psalms, in the 24th chapter, it says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And uh, I think if, if we were to read that and understand it, it means that everything that we have and everything that we see around us belongs to God. And, and that would mean that we no longer have ownership of those things, but rather God has given us uh, or allowed us to be stewards, uh, to steward what He's given us, our time, our talents, our giftings, our finances. And, and God so generously poured those things out on us. But I believe that the Bible teaches us that we're blessed to be a blessing, right? Uh, and uh, that could be a challenge sometimes. Sometimes, but I really want to encourage you uh, that as we uh, continue to be faithful and as we continue to trust in God, that He begins to trust us with more. When we're faithful a little, that He will trust us in much, the Bible says. And so as we take up the offering, we're just going to pray. And God, we just thank you, God, uh, for your goodness towards us. God, I thank you that as we trust you, God, and delight ourselves in you, God, uh, you will lead our paths and guide our paths. And God, I pray that as we give this morning, God, that it would be bl that it would be um, expanded and blessed, God, and we see our kingdom furthered, God, here in Whangarei. And everyone has said, Amen. Wow, I'm so excited uh, to have my friend Peter MacArthur sharing the word this morning. Uh, he's a good man. Can we give him a round of applause as we welcome him up? Awesome. Hopefully everything's going to start working magically. Is that working? It is. Fantastic. And uh, that's very cool. Well, as uh, Mike shared, sorry, Adrian shared, force the habit. Um, as Adrian shared, uh, my name's Pete MacArthur. It's such a privilege to be sharing with you this morning. I'm one of the pastors here and take a special interest in life groups. I wonder how many people here have ever been to a restaurant and been brave enough to choose the chef's choice option? You know, you know that option that they sometimes put into their menu where you can, you, it's kind of like a lucky dip, you can have it, and then the chef simply just brings out whatever he's working on at that time, stuff that is cool, doesn't quite make it to the menu. The other, the other week, Sarah and myself were out um, at a restaurant, and we had chose that chef's choice option. 
And it was really exciting. I was excited to see what might come out. Until I see coming to our table a quarter of a cabbage. Just, just a whole, just, just a half quarter. They hadn't even cut the thing up. It was just a cabbage and it was on a little bit of sauce and on a plate. And I'm not sure about you, but when I was on the way to that restaurant, I wasn't thinking, you know what, I'd really love some cabbage. You know, actually, yeah, I'd really love some cabbage. That, that just doesn't cross your mind. You don't go to the restaurant and think, man, I really would just love a big slab of red cabbage. And, um, but because we'd paid for it, I decided I'd better try it out. And then as I tasted it, I was immediately struck by an amazing array of flavors that I just simply wasn't expecting. Because what I didn't know is that they'd taken this cabbage and they'd marinated it in some kind of special sauce or something and they'd added some uh, flavours into that thing and the cabbage had soaked up the flavour and so when they prepared it, it looked like a cabbage but it was really so much more and I was immediately just impressed by just this genius of a dish. That It was, it was almost like the chef was just having us on a little bit because um, it looked like a cabbage, but it was actually so much more. And it got me thinking that how much of life we are so focused on the way things should look like that we miss them when they actually come. Because not everything in our lives come in pre-packaged, pre-expected forms. A few years ago, I I felt led by God to take a particular job. I'm, I've been a teacher for a long time and, and I felt led to take this particular teaching role that many people felt was a backward step in the teaching world. And um, I needed a job so I took it and I felt the Lord leading me to take it. And uh, in the first month what I realized was that it wasn't a backward step at all, that actually God was placing me in that position to be a, um, a real good Christian witness in that place and also to give me enough headspace to allow for greater involvement in ministry here at church. You see, if I'd followed conventional wisdom... I would have missed the miracle that God was bringing because I was expecting it to take another form. To take another form. I don't know uh, how many people here can relate. Maybe, maybe all those years ago, you started dating a guy and he was a little bit annoying and uh, maybe not as good looking as you were hoping. And uh, now, miracle upon miracle, he's actually sitting next to you, and God has brought you two together, built an amazing family around you. The miracle was there. It just took a different form. You don't, you don't have to confess to that being you, by the way, but I'm sure there are some other people, some people who can relate. I'm sure my wife can re- relate. How many people have also maybe taken a job that on the surface looked like just a, a job for necessity? Just a job because you need a job. But in retrospect, you realize God had placed you there, had placed a miracle in front of you that, that you would have missed had your eyes not been open to things coming in a variety of forms. Because often the miracles of God, they take ex- unexpected forms in our lives. When I look back and think about the major things God has done in my life, so many of them I did not immediately recognize as a move of God. I just, I just took this thing because it was kind of a natural step in front of me. And then I look back and I see that God had packaged a miracle for me in an unexpected form. The danger with this kind of thinking is that we can be so focused on the way we want the miracle to look like that we miss the actual miracle when it really does come. Because God's plan for us is so much better than we would expect Sometimes his miracles just take unexpected forms. In Matthew chapter 13, in your notes there, there's a scripture. And Jesus was teaching the word of God and kind of unfolding the kingdom to a a group of people. Except the problem was is that some people were standing right in front of Jesus. They were hearing the words that were coming out of his mouth. But they remained blind to the kingdom of God that was unfolding right in front of them because it was taking an unexpected form. Jesus said this about that type of person. Otherwise they may see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and I would turn and heal them. In other words, the work of God was going on all around them, except they missed it. And so often the work of God can go on all around us, except we miss it because uh, we're expecting it to take a different form. 
Most of the time when God moves in our lives, it's outside of what we were expecting. We might have been expecting one thing, but God presents a better thing that we miss because it looks different to how we were expecting it. I say all of this to to make a single point, and that's that breakthrough in our lives can be really, really fast. It can happen in an instant. And at other times, it can be really slow. Breakthrough can happen on your own in your bedroom where suddenly breakthrough comes or it can involve somebody else. Breakthrough can come in one area of your life but miss another. Breakthrough may come when you've only just got a little bit of faith but other times requires significant trust in God. But whatever form the breakthrough takes, We believe here at Elam, one of our core values is that you can expect breakthrough. That as children of the living God, you can come before the throne of grace and you can boldly request God because breakthrough is something that you can expect. Breakthrough, whatever form it takes in your life, is just way too important to miss. I believe there are some real keys in our lives, things that we can be doing while we wait for breakthrough, which can help us stay open to it, which can build a platform, a foundation that, uh, w- of, uh, of faith that when it comes, we're ready to receive it. Because when it comes to breakthrough in your life, you're not a passive observer when it comes to the things of God. You're an active involvement. You're an active involvement. So I believe there are some habits and some attitudes that you can do, things that you can do in your life, which will build a platform for God to work and to allow room for God to move in a mighty way. All right, so let's go to the scriptures this morning and let's find some of these keys. In Acts chapter 16, we see this amazing story. Uh, Paul and Silas are taking a, um, a missionary trip around and just sharing, sharing the word of God. And um, one, in one place that they're, they're traveling to, uh, a girl who, a slave girl who was possessed by a demon is following them and um, pestering them. This particular girl could foretell the future and she was creating a certain amount of income with, with the way she was doing that. And she just was following after Paul and Silas, just pestering them. And the Bible says that she was pestering them for several days until Paul kind of loses his rag with this girl. And... Um, turns around and just casts the thing out, just casts the demon out and gets on with his life, except except the problem was is that the owners of the slave girl realized that they just lost their income, and they incite this this rebellion, they incite this riot, and so in your your notes, Acts chapter 16, verse 22 to 26, this is what happens next. The crowd joined in against uh, in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in an inner cell and fastened their feet to the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. Amen. That's what we're believing for this morning. You know, there are are things in your life that can really only shift under the power of God. There are things that in your life that can really only move when it comes to breakthrough. It might be a, a toxic work environment that you find yourself in, and what you need is for attitudes to shift, to become life-giving, to become encouraging. It might be a marriage relationship that's really struggling, and what you need is breakthrough and God to bring two people together and uh, begin to work to resolve some stuff in your life. It might be a sickness or a disease that is really impacting your life and what you need God to do is to shift it in Jesus' name and uh, under the power of God. Now we believe here at church that breakthrough is something that you can expect, that, that we can go before God and that whatever it is that needs to shift will shift in Jesus' name. However, there's a bit of a but here. 
The story that we've just read of Paul and Silas tells us that there are things that you can be doing while you wait for breakthrough. That there are habits and attitudes that you can take that, that will act as a pathway for God to work in your life. That will build a platform of faith so that the miraculous will come and can come into your life. And so we've got three habits this morning that I'd love to look at, the principles that we find in this story. And the first habit in your notes there that makes way for the miracle of God happening in your life is to get a partner. Get a partner. There's real power in having somebody walk beside you as you pray out your miracle. As you, uh, to keep you accountable to continue to seek God for that thing that you are expecting. Can you imagine how that... Uh, prison conversation goes when they first, Paul and Silas first land in prison. I can just imagine Silas saying, Paul, what are you up to? You know, you were able to put up with this girl for days and now you just flip the switch now? You know, we've been beaten. My, my shirt, this beautiful shirt that my wife has bought me has been ripped. You know how Mrs. Silas gets when we get in trouble and land ourselves in prison? She's not going to like this. And you can, I can just imagine Paul replying, Silas, man, I know this looks really bad. And I know that we're in prison. But this situation here is the very place where I can see God working. Come on, let's stay positive. Let, let's build our faith. Let's sing and praise our God. Because this situation is the very place where God could work a miracle here. Come on, let's keep believing together. There is immense power and, uh, in the encouragement and accountability of a friend to say, hey, that thing that you believed for last week, you need to keep believing for it. You need to, you need to position yourself with, we need to position ourselves with somebody else who can encourage us when, when we're expecting a breakthrough that doesn't come right away. When I, um, when I finished high school, I felt the call of God to spend a year on the mission field. And um, the only issue with that plan was that I needed to raise around $20,000 in order to cover the costs of going. And uh, the way uh, my father and I planned to, to raise that money was to put in everything we had, but there was still quite a large shortfall. And uh, so what we did was every day after dinner, him and I would go into a side room and we would pray for 10 minutes that God would lead people to give their money to the, to the mission. And uh, that was literally all we did. We didn't do uh, heaps of fundraising. That was we just prayed fervently 10 minutes every day for two months that God would provide. And every week, money would trickle in. God would be working in people's lives to compel them out of nowhere to give financially. And uh, until the time came to go, and God had provided over 90% of what we needed, and in the following two weeks, the rest of it came in. And the reason I share this is because to illustrate the point that the faithful presence of somebody walking alongside you almost shares the faith required for the miracle, that you can kind of share the faith required with somebody else. When they're feeling low, you can encourage them. When you're feeling low, they can encourage you. That uh, that, that will build a platform in your life for the miraculous. Don't miss the miracle because you don't have somebody to walk beside you. As well as getting a partner, there's, uh, there's something else that Paul and Silas did which kind of built a platform for, for the miraculous in their situation. And the second point I'd love to share with you this morning is this, is to praise expectantly. Yeah, so praise expectantly. In verse 25, we see that, that around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and uh, the other prisoners were listening to them. There's something about praising God in troubling times that is a very practical, Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. I thought I'd gone through puberty, obviously not. Um, it is a very practical expression of faith. It's kind of an expression of faith to go before God, before you've seen your miracle, and say, uh, God, I know that you're good. 
I know that you're a good father. I know that your plans for me are for good and not for evil. I'm still going to praise you anyway. I believe the promise is coming. And when it comes, it's going to be amazing. But in this moment, I'm going to faithfully believe for breakthrough and lift you up with praise. Just over a year ago, my brother-in-law was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. And uh, what that meant for him and his family was that uh, he spent most of each day in bed, that he couldn't help out around the house with with chores. They had two young kids. In fact, at the time, they had a a newborn baby, a few weeks old. And, um, And they had no other option but to continue to believe God for a miracle. And they they believed and prayed and believed and prayed, and the weeks turned into months. And for six months, his situation remained the same. And at every opportunity, whether it was in church, in life group, at home, wherever, in the car, listening to a message, at every opportunity, they would seek God for a miracle in their life. And for six months, there was nothing. Except in the seventh month, they went to a church conference and uh, somebody sitting next to them felt called to lay hands on my brother-in-law, Jeff. And in that moment, it wasn't from, a, from the preacher up the front, but in that moment, Jeff was uh, totally healed and regained 90% of his strength back. <laughs> Amazing work of God. My question on my heart, and it's probably the same question that you've got, is why six months? Why six months? Now, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm certainly not going to try and attack it this morning. But all I know is that for six months they were faithful in believing for breakthrough. That they were faithful and they continued to lift up God in a difficult situation and God moved. It might not have taken the form that they were hoping. It might not have taken the form that they were expecting. But they got breakthrough because they did not give up seeking God for a miracle. Choosing to praise God in tough times positions yourself in a place where your attitude is right and builds a foundation for God to do something amazing in your life. It might not take the form that you're initially expecting, but we can expect breakthrough nonetheless. The third point that I'd like to share with you this morning is is this. Something that you can do, an attitude that you can hold to that will allow room for God to work is to pray boldly. Do you know when you're negotiating to, uh, for a big purchase, maybe a car, a brand new car, or, or a um, house or something like that, when you're negotiating for a big purchase, it's not uncommon to make a really silly offer, to go into the negotiations and maybe offer even twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 less than the purchase price because you understand in that moment that you might not get what you're asking for but it's worth a crack. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of, what have I got to lose? Yeah, right. because, because you naturally take that approach when you're making a large purchase, it seems kind of silly to me that when we come to God to ask for something, that we can think that to ask for too much can be a little bit greedy. It's wise when we're asking God for something that we adopt the same, what have I got to lose approach. Because uh, we can think that asking for too much is a little greedy. Let me tell you, it's not greedy to try and shortchange the devil a little bit. It's not greedy to try and squeeze death and sickness out of your life. It's not, it's not greedy to try and proclaim breakthrough over your family and try and speak life into your kids. That's not greedy. That's what God has called you to do, is to expect breakthrough with boldness. So let's go before God. Let's be full of faith that God is a good father, that he wants to give good things to his kids, and say and pray prayers like, God, I know you're a good father. I'm going to boldly ask you for this thing. And uh, for no other reason, for the fact that I'm a child of you and you like to give good things to your kids. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 4 in your notes there, it says this, chapter 4, verse 16. So let us come boldly before the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we'll find grace to help us when we need it the most. You know, I've lost count of the number of prayers that I've prayed which say, God, I know you're a good father. I'm one of your kids, and I know that you love to give good things to your kids, so would you just, for no other reason, just give me this thing? Would you give, would provide a babysitter for tonight? 
Would you, would you provide for our needs in this area? Would you, would you speak life into my cousin who's going through a tough time? So why not take a bit of boldness and pray prayers like, uh, God, would you give me this house for well under the purchase price? Would we pray prayers like, God, would you heal this shoulder that has been twinging on me for years? Would, we, would you bring breakthrough in my marriage to see resolution and healing? Why not pray those prayers? We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. Let's get bold before the throne of grace this morning. I want to change tack a little bit here and speak to people who have maybe come in um, for the first time and, and you're hearing about this God. And I want, to, I want to share something with you. I came across a quote the other day written by an atheist who was investigating the concept and the idea of God. And he wrote this really honest passage that I'd love to share with you this morning a little bit. This is what it says. It says, Now here is my secret. I tell it to you with an openness of heart that I doubt that I shall ever achieve again. And so I pray that you're in a quiet room as you hear these words. My secret is that I need God. That I'm sick and can no longer make it alone. I need God to help me to give because I no longer seem capable of giving. To help me to be kind as I no longer seem capable of kindness, to help me to love, as I no longer seem capable of love. You know, the God that we've been talking about this morning is a God who wants to be involved in your life. A God who sees what you've been through, sees what you've done, and sees what you've, what's been done to you. The God who sees you exactly as you are loves you deeply and wants to be involved in your life. So if you know in your heart of hearts that God is calling you home this morning, maybe you've walked away from Him and you're coming back, or maybe you know nothing about this God and you've come here just because somebody invited you, let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. And I'd just like to extend an invitation. If that is you, would you pray with me this morning, just in your heart? As everyone closes our eyes and bows their heads, let's pray. You know, Jesus gave his life on the cross so that all of us who have wandered away may come home and come back into a relationship with God. So if that's you this morning, would you just pray along with me? God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus into the world to die and to take my place so that I may not be separated from you. Thank you that even though I've been far from you, that you've sought me out. I choose to accept the love and forgiveness that you offer as a loving father. And I choose to walk in relationship with you as best I can from this moment on. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me with all eyes closed and heads bowed, would you just raise your hand? I'd love to see you and recognize you. We've got a Bible. We'd love to get into your hands. Thank you. Praise God. Well, as we finish this morning, I'd love to share a story with you. Around three years ago, a relative of whom Sarah and myself are quite close with, excuse me, went into premature labor around 23, 24 weeks. And um, as such, she went to hospital and we got a text message when she was going in to pray. And um, if I'm honest, I'll say that we prayed with some faith, not as much as we could. And um, in the middle of the night, we got a second text message to say that all medical intervention had uh, failed and that the baby would eventually come and when it came, it was unlikely to survive. And I don't know if it was just because it was the middle of the night and I was really tired, but, but I woke up and with a desperation that I have never known since or before, cried out to God for the life of the next member of our generation, the next member of our family. 
In fact, if I'm honest, I'll say that I was really angry at the devil because I felt like he was just walking in, invited into our family and taking one of our kids. I don't know if that's theological, but that's what it felt like. And I got angry and I cried out to God saying, God, would you move? We have nothing else left. Would you give us the life of this boy? (laughs) And then we went back to sleep. And in the morning, got a text message to say that the uh, contract... The contractions have stopped. In that moment, the very same time that the text message was sent out, everything had stopped. And four months later, at full term, a healthy baby was totally born, no issues at all. That child is three years old today. Do you know, in boldness, we can go before the throne of grace and ask for big things? Do you know, let me tell you this morning that your prayers to God matter, that your boldness matters, that your position of praise matters, that the person who gets alongside you to encourage you to pray for that thing matters. God is looking for prayer warriors who would step up and say, God, would you give me this nation? Would you give me my family? Would you give me my marriage? Somebody who will say to the devil, you will not take my marriage. You will not take my mental health. You will not take my family. You will not take my future because I've got a God who heals. I have a God who hears me. I have a God who intervenes in broken situations. So when you stand this morning, when you lift your faith this morning, Well, we've got a God this morning who's ready to answer your prayers. as you came in this morning you'll receive a little slip of paper and this is how we're going to do our response this morning I know that God has spoken to you directly to give you something to pray for give you something to have boldness for give you something to get alongside your partner and prayer partner and say would we believe for this together I know that God has spoken to you this morning so this is what I'm going to ask you to do I'm going to ask you to write that thing on your little piece of paper as a statement of faith, as a line in the sand. It might be difficult to write, but I encourage you to do it anyway. Write it down and bring it to the front here as the band plays as a, as a, as a statement that you are going to believe for something. And in the coming weeks and months, the pastoral team, we're going to be praying desperately over every single one of these things. And as a community right now, we're going to believe for those things. So as the band plays, would you bring that thing forward? Would you have faith this morning? Thank you. 
Oh, these aren't baskets, church. These are the Lord's hands. <laughs> You're placing your prayers into the Lord's hands this morning. He's so faithful. He receives your prayers. Let's sing to him. Spirit of God, for fresh on. thank you. And God, as we place these miracles, as we place these prayers, God, these baskets, God, we're saying that we're not trusting in ourselves, God. God, we're not leaning on our own understanding, but God, we're choosing to look to you, God, to lift our eyes, God, not to look to the problem, but to look to the Savior, God. And we just lift these prayers up to you, God. We trust in you, believe in you, we have faith in you, and we thank you, God, that you are the miracle-working God, that all things are possible with you, Lord. And we just dedicate these prayers to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everybody see it? Hey, church, while our service is over, and I just want to encourage you, we've got a great ministry team. If you'd like some prayer, they would love to stand with you and pray with you. If you're still writing down your miracle, feel free to come bring it up. As I said before, we've got a great guest lounge where we'd love to host you in. So if you're joining us for the first time, maybe you feel like you haven't connected, go see the guest lounge, and we'd love to host you there. And don't forget, next week we've got two great services. Pastor Mike and Amy are back, and we've got a 9 a.m., 10.45. Uh, and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your weekend. Thanks Church. Yes. Yeah.